So this is the perfect tie-in because we are going to see a potential new agent, um, uh, data on a potential new agent for patients with metastatic colorectal cancer in the refractory setting, TAS-102, um, that's going to be presented in just a few weeks. Um, Alan, can you talk, me, talk to me a little bit about this? You know, so ac the answer is not really. Uh, I've, not, <laughs> I've not seen the data. Uh, it's, it's, of course, it's, a, it's, a floor, it's an F-dump inhibitor, it, which... Sorry about that language. It's <laughs> it's it's uh, it's in the fluoropyrimidine pathway, and it it appears to have activity even in patients who've seen prior fluoropyrimidines. And I, I this was approved in Japan, I believe. Right. And I've not seen the U.S. data, but I, I know it, or, I, the new data. But so I can't talk to the data, but I can talk to the excitement that there may be a new fluoropyrimidine. Yes. And there may be some hint that it works in KRAS mutated patients, correct? I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, it, why would That's right. It too well, of course. But yeah. I mean, well, it's interesting I, that because it's, it's a chemotherapy drug. Yes, it is. It's a normal chemo. I mean, it's more like the old school, you know, fluoropyrimidine pathway, which we kind of, in some ways, had thought to have abandoned after capecitabine. Still around. So I gave the 50th anniversary, we had the session, the 50th anniversary ASCO session on colorectal cancer, and it was an ode to 5-FU. And, and in fact, when you think about how important the fluoropyrimidines are and w have been since the 50s, uh, as I, I say, if it was tastuzumab as opposed to TAS, there would be a lot more enthusiasm mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. And so. Well, and I think what's intriguing about this is that it's an agent for patients refractory to 5-FU. Mm -hmm. So uh, after we've given full fox or uh, full fury, um, this is a potential new option. And also it'll be intriguing when we talk about now the continuation of anti-angiogenesis therapy and regorafenib would fall into that group. Um, how might this partner with an anti-angiogenesis approach, for example? Um, so it opens the door, I think, to uh, expanding treatment options, but also some interesting uh, research questions. I think, you know, historically we saw from one, admittedly, one center on the eastern, uh, nor uh, eastern end of New York where they do regional chemotherapy into the liver. And they get dramatic results. That's fluoroprimidine therapy, but they get dose and they get dose delivered that's much greater because of the pharmacokinetic of, uh, uh, advantage. So I, I think it. Why wouldn't we believe that if we could get a different fluoroprimidine in at a different level, that it might not make a difference? And now, those results are very selected patients. But the point is, this is all fluoroprimidine based, and the results are are dramatic in that subset. So. I think it's great uh, to, to have this now. It's now the challenge will be to fit it in and see where we go with it. So, Tony. So I think you know I would like to coin uh, 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 anything beyond. Uh, you know we've talked a lot about um, antiangiogenesis beyond progression. I think now we can coin the term uh, fluoropyrimidines beyond progression. <laughs> they keep on working, and that's uh, that's across uh, you know across uh, multiple lines of therapies, which is. Again, very exciting, but we've we've all seen you know trials uh, across the continuum that do suggest that continuation of fluoropyrimidine, um, you know, different forms or with different uh, agents, oxaliplatinide, you know, T can actually would confer an advantage, and so the fluoropyrimidines are really the basis uh, of all our successes to start with uh, with this disease, and we're just compounding. Uh, on these improvements over the last four to five decades. If you had to take one drug with you on an island to treat colorectal cancer, yep. I'd probably take five of you. Five of you. I mean, in some pumps. And you need some you need a way to infuse it. So. <laughs> exactly. yeah. But it is true, you know, sort of we all come back to the beginning again, right? And and so and so fluorouracil remains the the standard piece of, of the treatment continuum. We have um, multiple EGFR inhibitors that are that are approved. So I would be remiss to not remember panitumumab. I use this okay. a lot in Tennessee. Uh, we have the allergy issue and recently got first line approval um, for KRAS, for KRAS okay. wild type <laughs> uh, metastatic colorectal or cancer. Or wild type maybe. Exactly. So so.